before I moved out here to do this program, there were certainly a lot of people back home in Vermont asking me what the heck transformative arts was, especially since I was selling my nice country home and moving 3,000 miles away to the congested Bay Area to study it. So I came up with kind of a stock answer. I said the transformative arts was about using your creative journey to help others on theirs. And they accepted that without really understanding it. But I thought it sounded good, so I used it a lot when people asked me what my degree program was, even after I moved out here. Then uh, a few quarters into the program, I realized I didn't know what transformative arts was. And I began to get really pissed off when people asked me the question. So for a while, when people asked me what my degree program was, I would just say, art. I'm getting a master's in art. Then uh, transformative arts seminar, 2004, summer quarter, with Margaret Lindsay. She asked us that question flat out. I think it was the first class. Um, it's one of her favorite questions. And as we went around the room and gave our responses, it struck me that even though they were all different, they were all correct. And I began to wonder, wouldn't it be fun to document some of these answers through a person's journey and through their work? So really, it was in that moment, in that class, that the stirrings of this quest were born. Art that connects you to a deeper self. Art that evokes the memory of something that is truly real. Art that is deep wound healing. Art as sacred space offered as a gift. Art that is conscious art that sparks. My usual ground for creative expression is poetry, images made out of words. I like to paint, but never really took myself seriously that way. But in spring 2005, um, I began a painting which started by deconstructing the word peace. There wasn't any conscious motivation behind this, but looking back, I think I had to shatter the false sense of peace inside me by removing the safety net of metaphor. Then I moved on through a series of paintings that embodied the symbol river for art in the symbolic process class. Again, looking back, this feels like me playing in the shallows. Um, the sun still comes in here, it's very pretty, but there is a hint of edginess in the depths. Um, in the last one, I lay a net down, but the stuff that comes up is still sparkly. It still feels like a beautiful lie. What happens next is really exciting because between this last painting with the net and the first of my anger series, I went to Joe Jackson's MFA show, Summer 2005. Joe's work is so beautiful and intimate and exquisitely painful, but not one of those pieces was a lie. And I gained the extraordinary insight that the art could take whatever I had to throw at it in whatever intensity needed to come forth. So began my journey down into the raw, untamed depths of the primal wound, where through 17 canvases over three weeks, I called forth and gave voice to that which I could not speak in words. As I moved down through the different layers, I began to feel a physical and psychological lightening. People began to stop me and ask what had changed. Lines of tension etched into heart and soul seemed to be lifting, 
and a new radiance of spirit was starting to shine forth. Over and over the paintings drew me down to face my darkest and most powerless moments of childhood until the shift finally occurred. I found compassion, not only for myself, but for all parties involved. For the first time in my life, I felt no blame. What happens next is that I realized I had not a clue who I was anymore. Without this long burden of suffering, sucking up all my personal power and governing my choices, I didn't know how to act. And things felt really scary for a while until I realized that this is what was going on. So once again, I took it to the art. Now my work is about emerging topography. There are islands, archipelagos, whole continents forming within. Some pieces are complex, some are more simple, but they're all coming from this place that was formerly locked up tight with dark matter. Truly the stuff of darkness is rich and fertile. I feel like into its soil went the dying self and out of it came the seeds of new identity. This whole transformative process was embodied in a dream I had during this time. I call it breathing in the dark. In the double vision of the dream, I see the shaman closing the opening to the cave leaving me down below, inside the dark. He wedges a bit of white stick into one of the upper windows so that air can get in. The test is to figure my way out and back up into the light. I crouch near a tray of seedlings, smelling dirt and springtime. I feel no fear, only a commitment to the challenge. I exhale close to the plants. They take my gift of carbon dioxide and release oxygen back to me. We go on this way, locked in a cycle of reciprocal breath until the seedlings grow high enough to touch the window. The nearer they get to the light, the more the opening grows in size until I know of a certainty that I will get out soon. The bottom line is that all art that satisfies any definition of art that I would go near is innately about transformation, whether it's a subtle transformation of perceptions or profound transformations of the soul is just a matter of stance. But the bottom line is, line is that art changes things and transformative art is just a term that, re that acknowledges that that's one of the primary characteristics of art. What's transformative about it is, is that it alters my relationship to nature itself, that it's, that it's really about a, a capture of something in myself that connects me to everything else. That's what changes things. The paintings that I'm working on here are like whether in that they too change as I'm, as I'm moving, as I'm discovering things in the painting process. The paint basically takes on a life of its own and, and becomes transformative. It transforms itself, it transforms me, and with any luck at all, it transforms the viewer. You don't have to turn the, the wheel to make the river move. Uh, it just moves. So art, if you allow it to be, becomes an act of transformation, it becomes an act of engagement, it becomes an act of community involvement. It becomes something that's about something bigger than yourself. And you make those connections that I was just talking about, but eventually you offer it to someone else as a gift and they become transformed. And then in that intersubjective moment where they're reacting to you and you're reacting to them and you disappear into some kind of new sort of aesthetic event, 
where both of you are both present and absent. In that moment, profound healing takes place. It, it's really in the idea that people get your work, that, that you, you get validated, that you really become sort of part of the transformation. I'm really like fascinated by like the unseen and the unheard or the unspoken. One of the things that I always have been curious about with other artists, like okay, you can talk about your work, but I want I always want to know like what what happened for you? Like come on, give me like give me the juicy details and I feel like like in transformative arts it's it's about like that personal transformation. It's having a way to look at what's going on in me in a different way, to somehow step outside of myself and sort of objectify what's happening. And it inspires me. I've always been very moved by people who expose some part of themselves that they might not normally. And, and when somebody creates something that by them doing that, I recognize a part of a deep part of myself that I haven't allowed myself to expose in some way. That's always been just deeply moving to me. And they like when they capture that somehow. And so I think that if I could offer that to somebody else, that would I mean, that would be great. <laughs> It's still, I mean, it still gets hard, it still gets confusing, it still gets torturous at moments, but I think <laughs> I know how to be with that now in a different way, which, is, which has been one of the most amazing gifts of, of this program for me. Part of what it is is I'm trying to just, I'm trying to get out what is, like what is true for me right now or whatever's going on. So I feel like the work themselves are just these types of documents that sort of testify to my own experience. And just the whole theme of documenting for me comes up. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to conclude anything with these objects. I'm not trying to augment what's going on. I'm just sort of trying to transfer it onto another object, like document it in some way. And the, for me, that the act of actually doing that and then the act of being able to reflect on it and take it back in um, just becomes like a really um, a very therapeutic process, very healing, you know, and inspiring to me too. They, I just love that. Like I've gotten to the point where I love what I create. Like I like I love it. Like I, I just want to sit with it sometimes and be like, oh, you're so beautiful, and like not like beautiful and like a, aesthetically necessary, but like I love it because it encompasses who I am and I can get stuff back from it. And, it. and it has like a separate identity for me too, you know? So, yeah, that's kind of a nice place to be. <laughs> Transformative art to me is any art form where I can cause a shift to occur, or that causes a shift to occur, where somehow in the process of doing it, or in the process of seeing it, I become more conscious of a memory or something that's happening in my life that gives me a larger point of view. In my definition, I would also state that there, I see it as being somewhat representative of the Ouroboros because they use that symbol in alchemy and in psychology to be able to show how one needs to work with, with one's ego to be able to make it strong enough and healthy enough to deal with the world and that is a natural part of our process 
coming out of the womb and being in an unconscious state. Um, once that ego is fixed or secure, then the natural process of the Ouroboros is to become winged and or double Ouroboros, which means then we can subtly shift that ego out of the center place and allow the self to go into the center. So one of the pitfalls in transformative art, or what it is I'm trying to avoid, is to not get into the incestuous first aspect of the Ouroboros too long. That once I know that my ego is strong enough to withstand all the shifts and pulls that I want to go through,